Hello, class of 2021. Um, you are here because you are interested in learning a little bit more about the Common Application. I know a number of you have already started applying through the Common Application to some of your schools, but my hope is I can touch on a few specifics that might help you through your application process. If the Common App is new to you, what is the Common App? It's actually an application that can be sent to multiple schools. Does every single school use it? No. So you'll see on the top left hand corner of the Common App website, find a college. If you're curious if a college that you're interested in actually uses the Common App, you can search there. Otherwise, at the top right hand corner, you can cr click create an account and go ahead and start the process. Since I already have an account, I'm going to go ahead and log in now so that I can show you some of the specifics that I think are important for you to know. <clears throat> All right, when you get into the Common App, you're going to see these five tabs at the top. The one that you want to start with is the one that actually says Common App. This is the portion of the application that will be sent to every single one of the colleges that you list to work with on the Common Application. And so this is where your general information goes. You put your name, your address, what school you have attended or schools you might have attended, um, information like that. But there are some very important pieces here as well. Um, <clears throat> if you scroll down at this very first tab, you will see at the very bottom, Common App Fee Waiver. For those of you who um, might find that the application fees pose a barrier for you, um, you can actually apply for a fee waiver. College applications do cost a lot, um, and we don't want that to be a hindrance from you being able to apply. So you can see this list here. If you have received a fee waiver for the ACT or SAT, if you're receiving public assistance, if you're on free and reduced lunch or in certain programs, um, federal programs, you might be eligible. So if you're interested in that, that is a very important piece for a number of you. Um, next sign on this left portion, you'll see you wanna put family information, um, your personal education. If you've gone to multiple schools during high school, you will include those. You'll also see this testing piece. So there's been a lot of questions this year already about the ACT or SAT. Some of you were lucky enough to be able to take that test earlier on. Some of you have not been able to take it and for all we know may not get the chance to. So I wanna point out a piece here. Have you taken the ACT or SAT, and would you like to self-report? If you are considering going test optional for any of your schools, do not self-report. Um, if you do self-report, they get your test scores. Um, so I would recommend anyone testing or anyone applying test optional, please, please make sure you do not report your scores. You'll see that there's also another option when it comes to the actual specific school section for this piece. Um, but that's very important this year to consider. Also underneath that is activities. There are a number of you who have tons of activities, a number of you who struggle and might say, I don't think I've been involved in anything. So I wanna to touch on two different things here. First of all, for those of you who are involved in everything, you can only put up to 10 activities on the common application. So make sure you prioritize. You want to include activities that you've gained tons of skills from, ones that you've worked through consistently, that you've done for multiple years, maybe ones that you've held leadership positions in. Those are the types of things to consider to um, make your list shorter. Those of you who are struggling saying, I'm so busy all the time, I haven't had time to actually be involved in all these activities. Notice the fourth bullet point here, family responsibilities. If you have had to work to bring money into your family, you can include that as one of your activities. If you're in a single parent household and your parent is out working and you actually are the primary caregiver for siblings, you can include that as an activity understood by colleges that you are just as involved. It just may not be in a school activity. 
So keep those things in mind so that you are representing yourself to the best of your ability. This other portion that says writing is where you're gonna put your personal statement or your college essay, okay? Um, you will notice, I've already got some schools on my list here and it tells me these schools do require your personal essay. You will have to actually mark the prompt that your essay is answering. Please, please make sure, read over your personal statement, make sure that it is answering the prompt that you have marked that you are answering. Um, you will then include that here. As always, I would suggest if you copy and paste, read through it once you've pasted, just to make sure that everything went in there correctly. Um, you don't want to have any typo mistakes or any mistakes that happen just because of your transfer of information there. Scrolling down where it says additional information. This year, this has been added to the common application. With COVID-19, there have been a lot of unforeseen circumstances for tons of families. Um, the common application is actually allowing you a place to explain if you have had some of these crazy circumstances and let them know. Maybe it affected your grades. Maybe it affected your ability to um, actually attend school last semester. Um, maybe it just affected you emotionally and that's been really difficult for you. This is really the place where you can put that information. So what my recommendation would be is work on your personal statement and still make that personal to you, some experiences you've had. Try if you can to avoid the COVID-19 um, circumstances that you might have, because then you can put those here. If you have the room, make sure they can see multiple sides of you. Um, I don't want to skip over this discipli disciplinary history either. This is actually a piece you'll see on any um, applications where they're asking if um, you have had any issues related to academic misconduct, behavioral misconduct, any disciplinary actions that have been taken. Um, you need to be as honest as possible. Schools are understanding of different circumstances and just need to know that you can be honest here. All right, so again, this whole section goes directly to every single school. This is a portion you want to do first and foremost. Then you will go to college search. This is where you add the schools that you are actually planning on applying to. You saw that I already had Amherst, I put Bowdoin on here. I'm also interested, I'll put my alma mater, um, Colorado College. I know Colorado College is on here. I want to add that to my application. And now I can find it under my colleges. So again, I've completed my Common App tab. And now this is where I will find all the supplemental essays and questions that are specific to each school. From here, I will submit each school independently of one another. Okay, so maybe I know Amherst, I'm applying early action, but the rest of the schools I'm planning on applying regular decision. And so I'll prioritize that one first. Some things to point out on this individual school piece. Um, the questions here are, again, some general questions. When do you plan to start? Um, this is where you will see schools this year are starting to put their test optional um, opportunities. So it'll have their policy, as you can see here, listed where you can read it. And you can say, yes, I do want to include my scores. I do not. Um, any scores that you do, do say you want to submit, uh, make sure that you are sending the official report from College Board or ACT. Next piece here, recommenders and FERPA. In order for us to send your transcript and to send your letters of recommendation, you must complete the FERPA, FERPA authorization here. So you complete release authorization, read through this, and once you agree, you will check that and continue. And you're essentially saying, I acknowledge that my school can release this information and that it will be done confidential, in a confidential way. Um, and that you do wa waive your rights to review the recommending supporting documents. 
Okay, that's the only way you'll be able to submit all this information. And when you're ready, you review and submit your Common App. Please don't be in a rush. When you actually go review, it'll allow you to see all the information that will be submitted to the school. Take some time, look it over, make sure it is representative of everything that you have done, everything you want the college to see, and then you push submit. If you did not qualify for a fee waiver, this would be also where you will submit your payment. Any supplemental questions, if they have additional essays, will be seen here, and you will review and submit those separately. Um, again, you'll be able to do this for multiple colleges. You can see Bowdoin is right here, Colorado College is right here. Do each of those individually. Um, don't forget, once you start working in Maya, you will want to connect your Maya account to your Common Application, and you should be able to see that in our Maya um, bootcamp as well. If you have any questions though, always come and talk to any of your counselors um, through email or phone. We are here to support you through all of this and it can be an anxious time, it can be an exciting time. Either way, we are here for you. So please let us know what you need.